incredible if I had one word to explain the Great Scottish Run Half Marathon on Sunday was incredible and I'm here to tell you why, stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join us four days after the Great Scottish Run. <sighs> Incredible was exactly what it was. So nice cold crisp day here in Glasgow so requires the hat and gloves just for this little um, recap of vlog of the Great Scottish Run. So I want to sort of try and break down the race first and how it went and how magical getting that 151 half marathon was for me now don't get me wrong the target pace was 140 but i knew before even starting the race the day before if you've seen the injury vlogging and stuff the day before i knew i wasn't going to go for 140 although it could have been possible <laughs> so i'm just going to dive straight into how the race went so we kicked off getting up st vincent street met the press play and run podcast Folk, uh, the guys uh, for Newton Roadrunners and stuff just up the top of there. That was fantastic to see them. It's so early on in the race. So we headed up to St Vincent Street and to be honest, we were sort of going a wee bit fast. You might hear me saying to Grant in the vlog, let's just rein it in a bit because that was only like mile one and we were already getting excited. So a bit of self-check, patience and control was needed definitely so early on in the race. So as we were heading down towards Finiston, again, just feeding for the crowd, speaking to the crowd, um, getting good vibes for the crowd. Just the same as going up St Vincent Street. It's highly important if you can engage with the crowd, it'll make for a, such a better race. So heading down towards um, the Kingston Bridge, we were sitting at a very comfortable pace again, sitting at 8.50. Heart rate was coming down, but then we headed up over the Kingston Bridge and to be honest, the heart rate sort of went up a bit. We could have probably dialed it back a wee bit more then in terms of pace, but we really thought, no, we're fine, we can recover for this. I think we actually maybe dropped to 8.45 for that second mile, um, which was totally fine. Again, there was no sort of target in mind. It was just getting it done on the day. Um, as we came down the Kingston Bridge, heart rate was sitting at like 180, but again, Going over the Kingston Bridge, a wee bit of advice for anybody doing that is it's quite up and down, it's quite undulating, so uh, it's definitely something to keep in mind going for pace sort of wise. So heading round towards like 5k, sitting at a very nice steady pace, um, just as you head sort of down towards like the Springfield Quay, just near Paisley Road West. Um, just heading down towards there, it was perfectly fine. Grant did mention at that point though, his heart rate hadn't recovered. He was sitting at, I think he was still sitting something like 180. And I had said on the vlog that my heart rate came down to 150, which it was, I was feeling absolutely incredible. It almost felt like a Sunday run, <laughs> and I was a Sunday long run, just going out, with, meeting up with a few people and just going on a long run. That's definitely what it felt like. So as we get round the corner, I think we picked up some water round about there and I was busting for a pee and I says to Grant just before uh, mile four, I says I'm going to stop for the toilet break, you stop him and to be honest I think it served Grant in the world a good because after that he says I feel dead refreshed, my heart rate's coming down, I think it'd come down to 150 or 160 for him um, which was much better than the 180 that it was previous before the toilet break so again no pace in mind, he says let's just stick together so as we headed on round, I think it was about four and a half mile, just as you go over the flyover, over the motorway, Grant had said, listen, I need to stop, stop and walk. And in my head, I knew I was feeling totally fine. So I thought, let's just carry on. And I, I mean, Grant had a bit of conversation. He said, you go ahead. He says, I'm going to be doing this for pretty much most of the race. So I says, that's totally fine. We came to a mutual agreement. I think just after that, I took a gel, or just before that, I took a gel. So roughly about five and a half kilometers, six kilometer mark, I took a gel. Um, I think it was exactly the right time to take a gel. And I think it worked wonders for me, to be honest. So heading on up, I was, we actually passed the first person at 49 minutes. So on the opposite side of the road, you're talking that's 10 mile coming back away, 49 minutes. I think the actual finisher was 103 or 104 for the day, uh, for the half marathon, it was absolutely unreal. 
Um, I'll put his name up here if I can remember it. Um, aye, so that was that was fine. So again, just feeding through the crowd, just really going through the motions. Even in my head, like I wasn't playing any music. I had my hear my headphones on, but I wasn't playing any music. I was just listening to my surroundings, listening to my body, really feeling in touch with my legs and how everything was going. It was it was. To see, to be honest, it's surreal living this just now because it went so perfectly and as I said at the start, it just felt incredible, it felt right so I knew coming on, coming up to Port Park was next um, I knew roughly about that 6 mile marker just as we turn in um, again, nice to see Callum, Callum if you're watching it was really nice to see you there and you and little Leo um, so we turned into Port Park and I knew I had the hills so anybody that's going to be racing the Great Scottish Run please bear in mind that you do have the hills to take in because they can be, they can really throw you especially if you've been racing hard the first sort of 10 kilometers, 11 kilometers, then you go into like 3 hills in there so you got the first one, go down up the, the other big long one after the water station and then up another one I'm pretty sure um, so definitely don't get caught out in previous years, this is where I've been caught out. So I've raced hard the first 10k, 11k, maybe getting through there in like 45, 46 minutes. On Sunday, we get through there at 55 minutes. So it just shows you in terms of pace where we were at. Um, I must admit, going into Pollock Park, I started to do the calculations. If I race hard, how how good can this race go for me? How good, um, like, how how much a good time can I get? Can I beat my PB? And then I thought, no, I'm going to be like two hours. So when I threw 10k, I had miscalculated and I thought, no, it's going to be like 1.50. And I thought, no, it'll be, it, it will be actually near the two hours, especially if we continue at this pace. Because I was expecting so much worse. I was expecting to hit the wall and I didn't. Like, one thing I would say round about me is people were suffering with cramp and if I ever do this race again, I will never race it hard within the first 10, 11 kilometers. I'm always going to take it easy. Maybe 15 seconds faster than what i done it uh, on Sunday there, per mile for the first 10k, but I definitely won't be hitting goal pace straight away, that's for sure, because it served me so much better to save my energy for the second half of the race. And for me, honestly, I learned such a, a life skill maybe a racing skill, a skill about myself that I didn't know I had. So going forward in races now, I'm definitely going to factor in, like I just said, taking it easy up to like, if it's a marathon, taking it easy up to like 20 miles, 18, 20 miles, when the race really then starts, because it's much, I would rather, let's face it, I'm not going to win a marathon, I'm not going to win a half marathon. I would rather go out and enjoy it and get a respectable time and not suffer for days and end afterwards because there's so many people that go out there and race so hard and literally are seized up for days on end. Injuries, a lot, like, work within your capabilities. Be patient. So anyway, the race carried on through Pollock Park. Uh, I met Callum, the other Callum, for the group chat. Again, if you're not in the group chat, then you can hit the runner's motivation link down below and get in the WhatsApp chat with us. Again, we all go to so many different races. There's so many people for so many different walks of life, doing different things, coaches, ultra runners, 5k runners, 10k runners, like we're all different um, and that's what makes it such a special group. Anyway, back to uh, the race, so I did see Megumi just about 8 miles I think it was and again I took another gel just after that and again it was absolutely spawn, I just got it when I needed it, it was absolutely perfect. Normally I would take like three gels, space them out every sort of four miles or three miles or so within uh, the half marathon so the last gel would probably go in like 10 or 11 miles. So it was just so different this time so after I took the gel again it really hit the spot and I think a couple of times I really had to sort of bring it back a bit because I was finding myself running like 8.20, 8.10. I said no let's just let's just bring it back and and run the race properly and sort of kick on when we need to, if that makes sense, rather than kicking on too early and suffering later on. So after that gel really hitting the spot, we cracked on and we, I think we got to like mile 11 and there was a water station 
And see, to be honest, in my head, I felt like you don't need this water, Stephen. But I just took one anyway, sipped on it because I knew I could still pay for it later on. Like, if I didn't, maybe not, maybe it was in my head. Maybe I could have went straight through, save myself 20, 30 seconds. But if I'm honest, I wasn't in PB range, I wasn't pushing for first place. So, what was the point in not enjoying it? Like, trying to explain this to people, like, go out and just enjoy the race and have fun. PBs are great, but don't let it ruin your day. So, anyway, we carried on just after getting that water station past STV Studios and stuff across the Squinty Bridge. The crowd started to become electric. The crowd were incredible. And honestly, I know I keep saying incredible, but it is really one way to sum up how great the day was. The weather was incredible as well. So turning that, co uh, that corner just over the Squinty Bridge, I was really geeing up the crowd and I was feeding them as well. I could I could actually feel the goosebumps in my body as I was running. I can feel them just now. You can't see them because of this jumper and all the, the rig out, but I, I can definitely feel that same feeling like and the, the excitement um, of feeding off the crowd. So after that I knew I was on the Clyde side. I looked up and I seen the I seen the runners crossing the Kingston Bridge like mile two and I thought I'm so glad that's not me. I'm so glad that I started when I did. Um, anyway, coming along here, I met Des and Jenny for, um, I think it's Capital they're on into it, so I met them um, and they gave us a big shout out and it was just, I was really just feeding for the vibe and feeling the buzz. So we thought, right, let's kick on. I think this was about mile 12 and a half. Don't get me wrong, at that point, I did feel a couple of little pings of cramp. So I knew not to push too much. I knew to keep it in check. I knew my capabilities and to stay patient. So as we headed over the couple of the, the bridges you go over and back over again, it's like the final 800 and the crowd was just electric. The, it was just fantastic. And I knew there in the end that we were near the finish line. Um, I actually got a call for Natalie to say that uh, it's Zach that's going to run with me and Grant, yeah, and Xander was going to stay behind and run with Grant which I thought was amazing because he knew that Grant would need a bit of support getting over the line so kudos to both the kids they really support our journey and they really enjoy our journey as well they get totally into it and I think that's what makes us so special you're inspiring your children so just get out and get it done like if you're watching this thinking about running at least go out and try it Hit me up if you want to chat about it and talk about it, but hit me up. So going into those uh, last 400 metres, I knew I was looking for the, the for Zach. And I was, again, I was just feeding for the crowd. The crowd were electric, I was shouting at them and like, it was just, it really was, it really was amazing. It really was incredible. And then to see we Zach and Natalie, Zander and Rianne and all there, it was just, it, it was special to see the family turn up and support you. It really was epic. So we ran down those last final 400. Me and little Zach finished in a nice 7.55 minute mile. Um, that last mile. It does feel incredible to keep up with, by the way. It's very inspiring to other children and everybody out there. One thing I did want to touch on, if I was be going to be highly critical um, of the event, like it was great, it really was great. I think last year we targeted 140 and we were in the wave in front. So this year we were in the green wave, the wave behind. So we were in purple last year and this year we were in green. And to be honest, it was just overly busy. I don't know if that could be managed better. I don't know if there was too many people in the green wave. I don't know if people were jumping waves, um, but it was just overly busy. And again, it felt like we were in with the sort of two hour people, two hour ten people, rather than the sort of 140s, which we targeted and said we were targeting. Again, that's me being highly critical when I don't need to be. So overall, the run was absolutely great. So again, the video is flying over on YouTube, over on here, in fact, thanks to you guys, the subscribers. So please do check it out. If you've not checked out already, get inspired by it and sign up for next year's event because it really was absolutely perfect. And hopefully I'll see you 
there next year. Um, I think a few of my workmates, so I'm holding you accountable, Kenny and Charlie, I know he's will be watching this. I think a few of my workmates are going to sign up next year also, so it'll be nice to see them smashing it. Get them on the vlog too, get them on the channel too. Um, thanks for tuning in today, I know these race recap vlogs can be a bit long, but I think it's important to share your successes as well as your sort of failures as such. So. Aye, thanks for sticking around for this and coming back and supporting the channel. And I'll see you later in the week for a little update on what's coming next year on the channel. Thanks again guys, let's go and get this done. Come on.